Well, today I'm having a problem with the faulty clutch. Um, this is the one that came out just through normal wear and tear. Um, the friction plate was worn, just normal age related problems. But uh, when the new one went in, um, the pedal has been soft um, and I cannot, uh, it, it, it's not the hydraulic system. I've, I knew it wasn't, but I've replaced the master and slave cylinder, I've checked the flexi, um, Everything. I'm, I'm, I'm certain the clutch cover on the, in the car now is soft for some reason, um, and it's not releasing properly. Like something's flexing, like the fingers or something are just moving too much. Um, and I've had it in and out twice now, thinking it might have been the flywheel, so I resurfaced the flywheel the second time, and uh, no difference. So now I am thinking it is the clutch, but. I've no real way of testing it and if I'm making a warranty claim I want to be sure of what's going on I don't want to be messing around um, so I think I'm going to make a test rig for a clutch cover um, which is going to involve bearings and making a load cell and a little bit of programming um, I think I've decided on how I'm going to do it I, I've got it sitting on a brake disc, I've got more flywheels kicking about um, and I'm going to use some threaded rod through the middle with some, I don't know, washers I guess, um, these are out of a wheel bearing kit, um, like a wheel bearing insertion kit and then I'm going to have another one on the top, like one underneath with the nut and the threaded rod coming through. This not threaded onto the on the rod um, and I'm going to make a load cell out of some of these two. I'm going to cut it off square in the lathe and uh, apply a full bridge strain gauge to it um, and then use an Arduino to read the signals from it. I've ordered a linear potentiometer as well, I didn't have any one hurt to have a few extras, um, loaded 10. So I'm going to, I mean I was thinking about just using a DTI to measure the movement but it would be nice if I could have both numbers um, logged in the software. I mean it's totally overkill, absolutely overkill. Um, but I like messing about so I'm going to make a little clutch dyno. And then, yeah, once the tube's on there, I'm going to have a, a, yeah, yeah, another washer sitting on top of the tube and a bearing so that there's no turning force applied to the uh, load cell, which would skew the readings quite a bit, I'd imagine. Um, and then take readings from this at certain displacements, take readings from what I suspect is the fault you want. Um, which is an uprated one, so it should be stronger if anything, because it's still an organic disc. I suspect the faulty one is going to be a lot weaker through most of the travel. And uh, <laughs> if I can show them that data, then they can't say anything. It's they're just going to have to accept the warranty plan. So yeah, I'm going to get cracking.
right, I'm going to try and apply this uh, strain gauge to the load cell I've made. I'm only using a suit with loads. Not exactly critical. These are not easy things to work with, though. Not any bit of tape on more than anything, but hopefully that will hold it. That's not quite straight. I'm sure it will it will work. What I need it for. Cheap tape, and uh, hopefully we're not set. So that should be somewhere in here. I'm sure, it's nice and uh, well connected. Yeah, it's not far off straight. Some wires onto that, cover it over with something, and I'll have a load cell. <laughs> totally overkill. So, after a little bit of breadboard work and some minor coding or programming, whichever you prefer, um, I've got this. Uh, the camera's not picking up the display very well, but you can see it. it's, it's a nice, lovely, blue and dead clear in person, but um, yeah. This is the load cell, got a hole through it for the uh, threaded rod to go through the clutch and when I squeeze it you can see the force increase and decrease when I let go. Um, I mean the actual force is going to be orders of magnitude greater than that so I'm not bothered about it jumping around a little bit as it does. Um, yeah it's going, probably going to be 100 kilos or something and I'm not going to be able to make that with my hand at all. I'm surprised it shows up at all from me squeezing it. I must have made it quite well. Um, I'm blowing me on trumpet there. <laughs> uh, I've also added in the deflection. I've got a linear potentiometer coming tomorrow but that should just replace this rotary one here and attach somewhere. I haven't quite figured out where but that will show me the uh, deflection versus the force it resets the potentiometer position, uh, the reading every time you reboot it. So I'll just have to get it set up, reboot it, and then it'll start from zero. Um, the force is just zero when it's no force, so that doesn't need re doesn't need zero in really. It's close enough as it is. Um, but yeah, that should work. Obviously, the numbers are arbitrary; they're not calibrated. But it's a comparison, not, um, I don't need to know the actual figures, I just need to compare them really. I could calibrate it, I have a calibrated weight that I could use to calibrate this, but uh, I think that's maybe a little bit overkill, what the whole the entire project is like, but um, yeah, now I just need to uh, test it on the, uh, on the clutch. I still can't believe it reads my fingers. Well, this is the setup I've ended up with. Um, I was hoping to use this linear potentiometer, but it turns out it's not actually very linear. Uh, it's only linear across a few mil on the middle of the travel, and well, I just sucked it off and used uh, DTI instead, and just marking down the reading at every uh, millimetre of travel. I mean, I could have logged it in software or what have you, but. It needs logging at points, really, because as the force is applied, it's slightly higher, um, and then it levels off once I try to settle down. But uh, just show you an example reading now. I did use some threaded rod, but it just kept failing on me. Cheap stuff. So I went with the old head bolt. That's another millimetre, one full turn. And uh, we're over the biting point now, effectively. Well, the, the release point. 
again the numbers are arbitrary but uh, that's just shy of 1400 1375 it peaks at about 2000 um and ramps up pretty quickly within a few mil really um two or three mil or the other one i don't think that's going to be anything like that um but i'm gonna to have to pull it out the car to find out but yeah it's not reaching a hard point within any kind of length of that it's, it's maybe here not here um but once i get them graphed up hopefully it'll be easy to see but yeah result Just for the hell of it, I thought I'd do a calibration. I've got me calibrated weight out. It's a decent standard. It's not the best, but it's close enough. Um, five kilo weight is roughly 50 on the force. I don't know how I manage that, but uh, I'll take it. So, yeah, it's literally just not the end number off, that's your kilos. Uh, so about 200 kilos it took to open the clutch. Nice.